of launching with uh, some fresh energy. And speaking of fresh energy, we've got Cindy Dower uh, from the Westside Cultural Alliance. And uh, are you ready to take it away? I am. I am. My slide's been up there. <laughs> All meeting. Then we're going to get you started. Oh, and, and I'm standing in the way. I'm going to stand on the side. Stand there. Sure. All right. How do I get the bar at the bottom of the way? Um, let's. There you go. Voila. Cool. All right, well, before I get started telling you about the Westside Cultural Alliance, I was going to give you guys sort of a little arts and culture in Washington County quiz. So I wanted to know if any of you recognized what signature event in Washington County this photo was taken at. This one was actually taken in 2012, but it's a signature event held every June. Anybody? Yeah. Ten tiny dances. It is. It's 10 tiny dances in downtown Beaverton where they take these two foot, but you can't really see the stage in this picture, but they're two feet by two feet and they're elevated uh, and they get dancers that represent cultures from around the world, but also contemporary dancers and they nestle these stages in downtown Beaverton and you walk around during the farmer's market and you get to see the, the dances. So this is definitely one of Washington County's sort of annual signature events um, of arts and culture. What about, I was wondering if anyone could tell me what two professional theater companies are located in Washington County? Bag and Baggage and Broadway. That's right, yes, Bag and Baggage uh, Productions, which is based at the Venetian in downtown Hillsboro, and then Broadway Rose Theater Company, which is based in Tiger. Um, they're both professional theater companies uh, and do outstanding work. My final question was, do any of you know what art gallery in Washington County is celebrating its 50th anniversary this month? 50 years this art gallery has been in Washington County. It is. It's the Village Gallery of the Arts um, in uh, the yeah, well, no, 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 sorry, not the Val Valley Art Gallery. Oh. It's the Village Gallery of the Arts, um, right up there in Cedar Mill. It's right next to the Cedar Mill Library, and they're celebrating 50 years this month. No yeah, so next time you're in Cedar Mill, uh, if you're out near the library, check out the, the gallery there. So a little bit about the Westside Cultural Alliance, which I represent. Uh, the Alliance was formed in 1999 when Washington County was creating a cultural plan. Uh, we were bringing together stakeholders from around the county in uh, arts and culture to give feedback and um, ideas for the plan. Uh, then in 2004, we became a 501c3 a charitable organization. Uh, we didn't have funding for a long time, and then I believe, and I've been with the organization for about a year, so I'm still digging through some of the history, which is stored in a nice box in my office right now. Um, but we're primarily funded by the Regional Arts and Culture Council, which um, the Regional Arts and Culture Council, or RAC, gets funding from Washington County, Multnomah County, Clackamas County, as well as the city of Portland, and private sources. And Metro, thank you. <laughs> and we get about $12,000 a year uh, in direct allocation from RAC for staff time. We have one part-time staffer, that's me. <laughs> and we're run by an all-volunteer board. One thing that we really try to keep in mind at the Westside Cultural Alliance is this county-wide perspective. Um, so in Washington County in the last 10 years, there have been incredible developments in arts and culture. There are now four public arts commissions in Washington County, Forest Grove, Hillsboro, Beaverton, and Sherwood, all have citizen panels representing arts and culture and giving feedback to those cities. Um, but one thing that we found is we call them silos. We've been talking about silos of arts and culture. And there isn't a lot of communication between these groups. So one of our goals is to keep that county-wide perspective and to increase collaboration between organizations that are out there in different areas. I included our current board members to give you an idea of who is spearheading this organization. 
We have Christina Caravaca, who is the cultural program supervisor for the city of Hillsborough. So she oversees the Walters Cultural Arts Center, um, the Hillsborough Arts and Culture Council, anything having to do with arts and culture in Hillsborough, Christina is pretty much in charge. Sharon Maroney is the founder and artistic director at Broadway Rose Theater Company. Liz Patch is from Sherwood and she is an active volunteer. She's with uh, Rotary and also uh, volunteers with the Broadway Rose. Sue Pike may be a familiar name to some of you. She is a longtime uh, resident of this area and is very active in the Beaverton Chamber, uh, as well as with the Icing Choir, which is a fantastic group based in Beaverton. Laura Rollins is our current chair, and <clears throat> Laura is a choreographer. Uh, she also helped found Funny Farm Early Learning Center, which is in Garden Home. Mm. Another familiar name might be John Schrag. He's the publisher of the Forest Grove News Times and the Hillsborough Tribune. He also publishes the quarterly Washington County Arts Guide, which just recently came out. Uh, we also have Janie Scott, who is the cultural program manager at the city of Beaverton and about, involved with the Beaverton Arts Commission. And finally, the amazing oh. Eric Squire, <laughs> who of course helped found the Aloha Library. He's working on the Aloha Historical Society, Public Affairs Forum, and CPO6. So we're very lucky to have Eric. Here um, are some of our goals that we're working on currently at the Westside Cultural Alliance. We have just launched, or we're launching this month, um, arts and culture networking events for Washington County. So again, we're working on that, go that goal of increasing collaboration between existing organizations and breaking down those silos. Um, so actually, I have a hand up for that, so I'll pass <coughs> these around. We're calling it Eat, Drink, Art West, which actually our board member in the room helped come up with. Um, so you can take a look at those. We'll be rotating our networking events around the county. Uh, the first one will be at the Golden Valley Brewery off of Bethany Boulevard in Cornell right there. Another one of our goals is visibility and awareness for arts and culture in Washington County. So we do this in a couple different ways. We have a website, westsidculturalalliance.org, on which we pretty much have an index of almost every arts and culture organization and event in Washington County. Um, so if you're looking for something, an event that you remember, or an organization, um, you can easily search our website and find that. We're also on social media and now helping to spread the word about exciting events in fact, I just posted on Facebook today a reminder about the annual, the 23rd annual Chalk Art Festival happening in Forest Grove later this month. Uh, the Washington County Cultural Plan, which I mentioned earlier, um, the current revision of it expires in 2015, which will be something that we will be active in seeking feedback and helping get stakeholders to submit their um, ideas and opinions for. Uh, finally, I come to public and private support for the arts, which of course comes down to funding. That's what we're talking about, funding for the arts. Uh, if you ask any arts and culture organization in Washington County what their number one need is, then it's funding. There are several groups right now um, running campaigns that are raising private support for the arts. RAC, the Regional Arts and Culture Council, does a program called Work for Art, and they partner with um, businesses to allow employees to make charitable contributions through payroll deductions. So you get to decide how much you want to donate, to what group you want to donate, and the frequency of those donations. There are several companies in Washington County that do Work for Art, Intel, Pacific University, City of Beaverton, Burgerville, and Washington County. Another kind of interesting um, campaign raising public, or excuse me, private support for the arts, which I thought would interest you guys. Um, the Hillsborough Arts and Culture Council just created the Arts and Culture Endowment. So it's a legacy giving campaign. Um, and so they're creating this fund that will support programming uh, and organizations that service Hillsborough for years to come. When we're talking about public support for the arts, 
we usually make two arguments in favor of why we should have public support or public funding for the arts. The first one is livability. So when we're talking about creating livable communities, one of the factors in a livable community is access to the arts. Um, so, yes, so access to the arts. The other one is um, economic vitality or, thank you. Or economic prosperity. So they did this study, Americans for the Arts, uh, in 2012, and I thought I would just share some of the findings with you because it's pretty interesting to see the tie between um, economic prosperity um, and the arts. You can see it was called uh, Arts and Economic Prosperity 4, and they're looking at the economic impact of nonprofit arts and culture organizations and their audiences. So this is where it's going to show us how arts and culture can affect Washington County. So this was a national study that they did. They looked at 182 communities and regions, including several multi-city and multi-county regions. They looked at the greater Portland area. Um, and they represented all 50 states in their study. And I took their graphic from uh, their study, but I think it, it projected better than I thought it would, so that's great. So you can see there's two different um, things they're looking at here. They're looking at the economic impact of the organizations and then the economic impact of the audiences. And you can see in direct expenditures, which is the top line there, um, across the nation in 2012, arts and culture organizations spent $61 billion. And that includes payroll, that includes facilities, that includes insurance, that includes paying their performers. Audiences that attended arts and culture events in 2012 spent $74 billion. What do you think someone who's going to an arts and culture event spends money on? Parking. Art. Alcohol. Alcohol. And wine. Yes, alcohol. it's mostly food and beverages. Um, but you can also see um, that they also generate arts and culture organizations a lot of revenue for local, state, and federal governments. This one's a little smaller, but hopefully you can see this. So um, this yellow part over here represents the food industry. So the restaurant industry and the arts go well together. Um, also, audiences that went to a performance spent money on transportation, souvenirs, clothing, and lodging as well. So just looking at the Portland metro area, um, so this was a study of the three counties in our region in 2012, it was a $250 million industry that created or supported 8,500 full-time equivalent jobs in our area and generated 21 million in local and state government revenue. You can also see, um, this is similar to the chart we looked at earlier, um, the breakdown of how audiences spent their money when they went to an arts and culture event. And again, you know, just like the national trend, the meals before and after the event were the biggest uh, expenditure. Another thing that's been on the Westside Cultural Alliance radar and will probably come back as a major goal in the near future, um, you can tell the difference in spending between residents versus non-residents, so cultural tourism is a huge industry and it generates a lot of money locally for our economy. Um, so that's something, again, we've studied in the past and I'm certain we'll come back soon. So here was the conclusion from all that studying and um, data that they gathered. By demonstrating that investing in the arts and culture yields economic benefits, arts and economic prosperity for lays to rest a common misconception that communities support the arts and culture at the expense of local economic development. In fact, communities are investing in an industry that supports jobs, generates government revenue, and is a cornerstone of tourism. The arts mean business. So again, when we're advocating for public support for the arts, 
We're talking about, yes, the arts do generate um, revenue for our local economy, and they do support small businesses and revitalize our communities, and we're trying to, again, create livable communities. So those are our two arguments in favor of public support for the arts. So I also wanted to include, just to kind of wrap things up, some ideas for you guys on how you can get involved in local arts and culture. So I put up some events that are happening near us, where we are now. Um, Bag and Baggage Productions is doing uh, The Great Gatsby in downtown Hillsboro starting September 26th. They love to do the classics with a twist, so there will no doubt be some surprise in there. Uh, Painter Showcase will be happening at the Reserve uh, in Aloha that same weekend, September 27th and 28th. Uh, then the annual tour of historic homes in Forest Grove is happening this month as well. That's a large fundraiser for the Friends of Historic Forest Grove. There are, I believe, eight houses on their tour this year, including the 1854 A.T. Smith House. Very cool stuff. And finally, Washington County Open Studios is happening October 19th and 20th. And that is all over the county. And artists open up their studios. Uh, and it's free. You get to drop in. You can go to your neighbor's studio. Or you can travel all over the county and see artists at work in their environment. So just some cool opportunities for you to check out. My Email address doesn't show up very well there, I apologize, but I have some contact information as well. Um, but definitely check us out online, westsideculturalalliance.org. We want to help promote your events. We want to help bring visibility to what you guys are doing in your community with arts and culture, whether it's a book sale at the library or a play down the street. Um, we want to know about it, and then we can help connect people with your organization as well. Questions, folks? Ah, yes. Um, I see on your card the uh, Cultural Coalition of Washington County gave you some money. Can yes. you talk about that organization? I can, absolutely. Um, so the Cultural Coalition of Washington County receives money from the Oregon Cultural Trust. Some of you may have heard of the tax credit that is actually that was renewed this year, um, which is pretty exciting. So if you can give a charitable contribution to your organization of choice, you can give a matching donation to the trust, and you get a tax credit for that donation. Um, and so the Cultural Coalition, I believe, gave out around $40,000 this yep. year um, in grants to local organizations. And so we did receive one of those grants. And um, they're actually opening up their next grant cycle yes, now. <laughs> yeah. So there's a new grant cycle out there currently. And they fund all kinds of amazing programs locally, um, everything from theater to fine art um, to photography to arts awareness. So Anthony, um, you, you are on that board, as are you. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> and what boards are you not on? <laughs> this one. <laughs> you can be recruited. It's Next true. question. There's another question out there. Lyles? I had one. Um, you mentioned when you, when you, one of your first questions is what theater production companies we have in the area. At least I think I understood that. I've been to plays in Hillsborough with the HART group. Is yes. That, is that number three or is that not a well, production company? Well, what I said was um, professional theater. So I there are an additional community theater groups there. Is Theater in the Grove, which has been around for over 50 yes. years. Um, there's HART, the Hillsboro Artists Regional Theater. There is the Beaverton Civic Theater. Um, there's also in Tigert a fairly new group, Mask and Mirror Theater Company. And then um, Sherwood also has a, the Sherwood Performing Arts, which they do mostly um, theater for children. But those are like non-professional. Everybody that's in the show community is not paid. Theater. They're, yeah, they're community. Yes, community theater. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I should have made that distinction. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, how about first some applause? Um, I really want to commend Cindy because uh, I've had the chance to work with her, and at the last um, 
um, West Side Economic Alliance, excuse me, West Side Cultural Alliance meeting, they voted me on the board, and I had to attend a couple. And um, uh, City is also uh, kind of famous for producing a magazine. And I'm wondering if you would, yeah, I know that's kind of old news, but um, one of the things that Cindy did was um, uh, produce uh, the Washington County Review, and that was uh, really remarkable um, because she just organically produced that, and you're uh, just doing an amazing job with uh, WCA. Thank I think you. that's just uh, awesome. And so uh, thank you for being here. Yes, and, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Um, beautiful. Well, um, as you and everybody else should be aware, there's still snacks back there. I tried to pawn off the last of the cookies in the last round, but uh, um, what I want to do is segue.